Richard's Toy Room and uh, another episode in the continuing saga of the 1978 Lincoln Continental Tonkar. So you may be asking, Richard, why are you showing me a picture of the front end of this Tonkar? Well, as you probably already know from uh, the title of the video, I'm going to go over some common repairs and problems that you may have with your standard hidden headlight system. I do not have the automatic headlamps and that is a, I'm not going to say it's a totally different system, but it has a totally different um, component in it that does make diagnosis of uh, issues a lot more complicated. It could be a lot of other things, but this is just basic vacuum headlamps and this is not just for Lincoln this probably worked for most cars that have automatic headlamps but this obviously is specifically tailored towards the 77 to 79 Lincolns um, and uh, the Thunderbird and the uh, the Marks and the LTDs that have hidden headlamps I believe they all have pretty much the same system. And this may continue before and after 77 to 79, but again, take it with a grain of salt. This is just really focused on this car, but uh, you can take some uh, tidbits from it possibly to uh, use on yours. Anyway, after that long blah 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 blah. So what you're looking at are my headlamps now down for well over a month. And that means never starting the car or driving the car, which I usually don't do. I usually would try to drive the car at least once a week, but I was kind of wanting to see how long these would stay down after this last repair and I mean, when I hit, once I hit the one month mark, I was like ecstatic. Uh, when I first got the car, they wouldn't stay down for, oh, 10 minutes. They'd start creeping up. And then I went through, and I'm going to show you what I did and show you uh, the places to look and the most common things you're going to find to uh, target. After I did some of the earlier repairs, the most I could get these things to stay down was about five days, which I was very happy with because what I was most concerned with was I'd go somewhere and I'd park and I'd come out and the lights are up or starting to come up. And that was just kind of irritated and just kind of made it look more like it wasn't a nice car. You know, I was like, oh, it's got problems. And but then when I, uh, you know, I never, not that I couldn't, but, you know, if you wanted to go to like, say, a car show or cruising or something like that. You park the car, you want your lights to stay on for a few hours at least. So I knew once I had it to that five-day mark, I was, I was good. But I knew there was still something wrong with it because I knew they should stay down a lot longer than five days. Even my Thunderbird, I had a 79 Thunderbird, and they would stay down for, you know, a couple of months. So anyway, uh, now, like I said, it's been well over a month now. I think it's going on five weeks, and they're still completely down, haven't peeped in a, a, even a centimeter. So I'm ecstatic that I, I pretty much have fixed, you know, this, this system about probably as good as you're ever going to get it. So now let me take you through my process and what happened and uh, maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't, but this was my experience and I know that these are the, um, what I'm going to show you is the three most common problems on this. Okay, so now we are up here in the left front, the driver's side of the car. You see the uh, coolant overflow in the washer fluid bottle. Well, you're going to want to dig down here. It shouldn't really be that hard to uh, find it. Um, right up here in this corner, it might be pushed down a little bit. There are two vacuum hoses and they will be connected together with this here four port valve. Now this is what they call the service valve. 
So what uh, the purpose of this, as you can see, it's marked where you're supposed to um, hook up the green and the yellow line to. It would be in line in here like that. And so this is so if you turn it, yeah, easier said than done. I'm trying to see if it, I can't remember which way to turn it. I think it goes this way. <laughs> it's not really easy to turn. <clears throat> really? <clears throat> anyway, this thing's supposed to turn 90 degrees. As you can see, it's pretty hard to turn. And it's supposed to uh, keep, obviously, a vacuum hold in between here. And when you turn this, you basically are opening the valve and letting all the vacuum out, and the headlamps will open up so that you can, like, service the headlights, clean the headlights, change the headlights, you know, with the car off. But there's really no need for that. All you need to do is pull the headlamp switch on. And if, you know, you're, uh, or even worse, all you got to do is unplug a vacuum line, and it'll do the same thing. But these are notorious for leaking. I mean, they're really kind of a bad design. And so I just took it out and I just took two straight lengths of uh, vacuum tube or even water tube, whatever, you know, with the little nipples on the end and just connected the lines together to eliminate this. That was my first thing I did. Well, that didn't fix the problem. So let me show you where I went. Next. Now also, if you're diagnosing this stuff, it really helps to have a, a vacuum pump tester um, where you can put things, pump it up, and see if it holds a vacuum. You can also, it has a gauge on it. You can also hook a gauge up in it separately, but you just get a vacuum pump. It uh, pretty much takes care of all that. Okay, so now Step two, or if that's already been taken care of, step one. <laughs> anyway, a, a second item of great concern and great failure is the three-port valve located on the firewall. When I got the car, the original three-port vacuum valve was, I can't remember if it was still there or if it was just completely missing and had something else in its place, but... There was a valve similar to this, which is your typical vacuum, three-port vacuum valve that you're gonna to find today. Uh, unfortunately, the thing that's different on these new ones is the lines are different sizes and they are not compatible with what's in this car originally. So you have to use like adapters and stuff. The original one looks like this. These are obsolete. You cannot buy them anymore. You can get good used ones. You just kind of like have to throw the roll the dice and uh, hope that you got a good one. So you have to plug off one of the lines here and then, or two of them, no, actually one, and um, hook your vacuum source up and then see if it holds. And if it holds, you're good. If it doesn't, if it leaks out, it's bad. And so that's that. Um, so I went through, I think, three of these before I found one that was uh, decent. And it is located right here. It's that right there. Same one I just showed you. And that's how it hooks up with that top port going off to the back of the engine. Now you are gonna have to obviously check your vacuum hoses to make sure they're not all dry rotted and cracked and hard and replace those as needed. I think this was the only one I replaced because it gets the most heat coming off the engine. But the other ones are all still original. I didn't replace any vacuum hoses except, except that on this car and you can see it's still holding for a month. So that gave me five days, but I knew I still had another problem. 
And that brings you to the headlight switch. Now this I got from the junkyard when I had the Thunderbird. It's not exactly the same as the one in this car. The difference is, there's a different, there's an extra wire on this one. And for some reason, I don't know why, the plug's different. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. It has a different part number. This is a um, 1977 part number. And the original one, which is what I took out of this when I replaced the headlamp switch, was a 1974 part number. So that's probably when they first used this system. But otherwise, it's identical looking. When I, once I replace this, you get I, you got uh, over a month down now. But uh, let me uh, show you the difference and what you kind of have to do to replace this. And uh, we'll wrap up the video with that. Okay, so this is the uh, switch that I bought to replace what was the original one. It's stuck in here. Saving it, but it is the factory switch, and I believe it's probably the original one. It's um, it's got a D2 or I'm sorry, a D4 VB part number. I'm show you there, I think you can see it there. Um, whereas this one has a D7 SB part number. This is the one I got from the junkyard. As you can see, they are pretty much identical. Except, like I said, uh, you know, wire. And weirdly enough, I don't know why, the uh, block where the plug goes on does not have these little, little knobs, nubs, whatever. And um, mine, for some reason, I didn't look that close at it because I really didn't care. But it was held on with a, a tie strap, which I'm 99% sure is not how they did it at the factory. But maybe it was. But it doesn't make any sense because I don't see anything on this switch or the one that I replaced it with, which was identical by the way, to hold this connector on. So I just put another tie strap on after I was done just for the hell of it. But see this one does have locking tabs and if yours does you have to pull up on these on either side to get it off and it will be quite a pain in the butt working on it underneath the dash, let me tell you. But you have to hook up your uh, lines back in the right ports. And the new switch does not have the paint dots on it. You have to so make sure that you remember where they went and hook them up in the right uh, sections. So the hardest part, honestly, of doing this, it's a pain in the ass. Now the, the switch actually mounts in sideways like this when you're looking at it on the dash. And you've got this button right here that you have to get up to and push in with your thumb or whatever you can get in there with. It's, it's, it's not as easy as this sitting out here in my hand. And then you have to pull the knob out. That's a lot easier than it was on the one where I work in the car for some reason. I don't know why, but anyway, then what you need to do is you need to unscrew this. This will be behind the actual knob. And then behind that, there will be Well, this one's a little different. Uh, mine had a nut, and this uh, was part of the nut. It had the shaft on it that went in here. And this plastic part was uh, screwed onto the, the threads. So that's weird. It must be a slightly different way to do it. Maybe this is maybe this is an improved model or something. I don't know, but this is plastic, so I can't imagine how that's much improved. But anyway, the uh, the Lincoln one here when I took it out, the metal nut threaded in here through the dash, and then this screwed onto the other side. It had like a double thread on it. And then you put it all back together with this, obviously. But, uh, yeah, there's two different kinds there. Anyway, that's what you have to do to get it out and then disconnect uh, the connector and reverse the uh, procedure. 
Okay, while I was editing the video for this, I noticed that I probably wasn't um, too clear because uh, the switch that I had from Thunderbird kind of threw me for a loop because it was a little different. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of uh, what you're actually looking at here. I don't think I have to take this switch completely out, but... See, this knob rotates off on this model, but there's no threads on the back of it. You see, there's a nut back there. See the black part there? And it's double threaded. So this part here threads onto the outside of that nut, while this is a, like I said, double-sided threaded on each side of that black nut there which uh, takes the place of that threaded stud on the on the end of the plastic knob here on the other one. So that's what you have to do to get this out on the link in here. So I just wanted to clarify that because it seemed a little unclear when I was editing the video, like I said. So I hope that helps. I think this is a more sturdy design than this here holding the whole switch in, but that's just me. But this is the part number that I used for this. For mine with no uh, automatic headlamps. And it is made in Taiwan, just so you know. I didn't know that when I bought it, but I don't think there's a whole hell of a lot of choices out there. You probably can't get one made in the U.S. anymore. Um, and I don't know if I would trust a New old stock, 40 year old or older one, because uh, it's got a whole vacuum and I would imagine that thing probably dries out over time. I don't know for sure, but just kind of my guess. But anyway, um, that's how you do it. It's pretty much that simple. So those are some tips for you. I hope they help you. And uh, we'll see you again soon.